It seemed this morning there was a, a lot of theme about looking at contrast. And looking at time, life. Looking at life. Yeah, in times past, I thought contrast was too soft a word for all the suffering or the problems that can happen, especially with the death experience. I love how Woody Allen says, I don't mind dying, I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> to the degree that I am in... Would you say that contrast is as big as you allow it to get? Yes. And would you say that there is benefit in contrast? Definitely. So does it follow that if you allow the contrast to get bigger, that the benefit can be bigger too? Yes. So it's sort of the game you all play. In other words, if you're doing it on purpose, then it feels different, doesn't it? Yes. If you are deliberately appreciating contrast, as in a more deliberate, defining, choosing process. Yeah. Right. Contrast, as I'm realizing, is a friend because it does show us, can we lean into it, challenge its power of validity, and kind of dissipate it. It's been really helpful. Good work. Yeah, in fact, I've lived a really dramatic life, art, mediumship, sign language, dowsing, frequency work. In fact, I was greatly honored with Jerry showing up a week and a half ago. I almost spit my soup out of you, just turned around. And it was kind of a symbolism for me that there's a work that I'm doing that's really related to what you've taught all these years. And my contrast, if you can help me with this, is health issues. To the degree that I vibrate high, to the degree that I'm feeling good, whether it's a fear of success or the body freaking out, but I've had years of health issues. So contrast as a friend, it's a way of explaining, slow down, ease into it, but without making a big hairy deal. Feeling your way. Well, allowing it and just knowing that maybe what it is, rather than it's being debilitating, maybe it's a clearing. So I'm playing with that, and if you can help with that, because to the degree of the things I plan to do in the next few years, I'm 62, I, I want to keep working the next 27 years with the things I'm developing now. And the block or the debilitation or the restriction of physical health, and it's a lot of variety of things. And in my mind, I don't really buy into it being evil or bad or that I'm exiting anytime soon. But there is that, there's the law of physical immortality, or, or physical mortality, that we are gonna pass, that this isn't all that there is. There's going on to the, into um, non-physical. But it's a query I'm having today, because even getting here, there was a lot of physical pain to deal with. The joy is great, but the physical body's saying, oh, gotta slow down, gotta slow down. I don't wanna slow down. It isn't about slowing down as it is about releasing resistance. In other words, resistance is always what causes the slowing down. Right. And if there is resistance, then pushing against the resistance isn't a good idea. But there are a lot of things that we think it would be of value to chew on here. So let's just relax and find a really good starting point. <laughs> the most significant basis you've already introduced in the conversation, which is the idea of resistance or allowing. The faster something is moving, the more upheaval there is if it comes to some sort of an abrupt stop. And you also understand that the introduction of resistance into any momentum does slow it. And let's just for the sake of clarification call that what contrast does. When the desire is this and the belief is this, you're introducing a contrast that slows it down. There are a number of different directions that we want to come at with this for you because we know that you have an understanding of the majority of what we have said about this. And you're also in the receiving mode often and even getting more. So we want to find a way of introducing to this conversation something that you haven't thought of before for the purpose of taking you into a new place of expectation. It's not easy to live in this physical world and not be aware of, if not bombarded by, resistant thoughts about your physical beingness. Now, it's almost like we're talking about two subjects because, of course, there's the subject of who you are from non-physical into this body and your connection with that intention and therefore with that work. And we can feel a very strong 
decision, determination to proceed in that way. Esther has that too. In other words, it just isn't anything that is more important to her than the progression of this. And in fact, the momentum of it is such that it is intoxicating. It sort of consumes her thoughts. It's what she wants to think about. It's what she wants to do. And she's at her happiest when she's doing it. And while there are a lot of other lovely things in life, nothing compares to hooking into your powerful intent that you held when you decided to come. So that's what you're talking about. That's big. But at the same time, you live in this physical world and you hear things that are going on around you and you simply cannot listen to things and think about them and respond to them without introducing a projection of a vibration into the mix at the same time that more and more of you are connecting with your true purpose for being here and you're finding your zest for maybe even eternal living it feels like it in this physical body at the same time there's a growing number of diseases and a growing number of things that people are talking about in other words people are just talking so much about all of that stuff and without meaning to it begins to affect the way you feel so what happens is when you have a strong intention to romp and play in longevity and at the same time you're being bombarded with conversations about things and so many people who purport to be well-meaning as they are exacerbating your feelings of concern about yourself as they're actually trumping up problems in order to provide solutions for it has a detrimental effect on the psyche of this time-space reality while you have the potential to be the most healthy that you've ever been you are not in other words, you are living in tension and in friction and in worry about things that are unnecessary for you to worry about. You have shared in times past that you've experienced a kidney stone. I've had them as well. In that time, it's a real quick way to get out of the vortex and out of alignment when you're in that kind of physical pain. Yes, it passes. You learn about nutrition. You learn about your pH, whatever have you. But to me, physical pain and suffering, even when I work with people who are passing and I'm working with them on this side and on the other side, and I see this suffering that happens, mass consciousness that's been burned in us, we know that that is a possibility or a probability. Years to build the Twin Towers, wrecking ball could knock it down in a day. And so the momentum of that which is healthy and that was going on, I feel like I'm rejuvenating but also under pressure at the same time. So I'm here and I'm getting it just from what everyone shared today, but I'm getting that there's a piece I may not know yet to allow for the vibrational aspect. Well, that is the answer, but it is as simple as this. It is considering the vibrational aspect only for a little while because there's not enough action in the world to compensate for that receptive mode of something that is unwanted. The power really is in the alignment of thought. It really is in the choosing of thoughts that are beneficial to you, which in many cases means staying off the subject altogether. Yeah. As you're around a dinner table and you're listening to conversations about things that send up red flags within you and make you feel guarded, know that this conversation is not helpful to you. It is not helpful to you if it feels like that. Now, it doesn't matter what it is that is affecting the way your vibration is flowing. The way your vibration is flowing is what is affecting everything else. And so the thing that is interesting as you become deliberate creators is trying to figure out. So if this conversation takes me into a resistant mode and the resistant mode indicates that I've got strong energy flowing that I'm not allowing to flow. And that's what causes a breaking down of whatever it is, because resistance is always what is at the heart of the slowing of something. Then it's logical that you might want to stay off those subjects or approach those subjects in a way that they are no longer causing resistance within you you but in order to do that you have to get really solid in the vibration it's what the idea of faith is it's what the idea of trust is you get to the point where you trust in this current more than you do in the reality of things now we're going to bring this all the way around so just stay with us you are going to hear this so easily and we are expecting a very good conversation to come from this so here's the basis that we would like to put here as the beginning of this so I'm in my body and I'm in the world and I'm observing this and this and this. And in my observation of these realities, I'm having a reaction, a vibrational reaction. So I'm projecting a vibration based upon what I'm observing. 
And as I'm projecting a vibration based upon what I'm observing, what I'm hearing from others, and what I'm even observing in others, or what I'm observing in my own body. Mm. As I'm watching these experiences, observing life as it has manifested, I'm also projecting the vibration for the next life that I am creating. The majority of people are offering the majority of their vibration in response to something that they are observing. Right. Well, that means that what I'm observing is dictating what I'm now flowing and what I'm flowing is dictating about what's coming next, which I will then observe. So I observe it, I flow it, I get more of it, I observe it, I flow it, I get more of it, I observe it, I flow it, I get more of it. Somewhere along there, you have to make a decision if you want to just continue to perpetuate the course of what you're observing. Well, you fortunately live in a world with enough diversity that there is so much that you can give your attention to that none of it causes that rocket of momentum necessarily to take you swiftly to a place that you don't want to be. But there is a general, somewhat gradual eroding of your sense of well-being as you live longer and observe more of the world. Yes. There are programs that Esther would like to watch, but the medical commercials are so cumbersome around them, and she wonders what those advertisements are doing to the psyche of the world. And what those advertisements are doing to the psyche of the world is that they are causing you to activate within yourself a vulnerability which is resistance that is the reason for the erosion so if we could somehow convince you that what's going on vibrationally is the reason for everything that happens where most humans are thinking that because it's happened now that they need to give their attention to it if we could get you to turn off your televisions globally if you turned off your televisions globally the well-being of humanity would improve dramatically immediately. I agree. Especially the pharmaceutical ads. You use the word because of the programming that is happening. Now, we just spent quite a bit of time here today pleading our case about the value of contrast. And now it sounds like we're saying, except for television, let's just get rid of that. <laughs> let's just get rid of that contrast. When what we want to say is, you must find a way to joyfully live within your contrast. Oh you must be able to select from the contrast what is of benefit, to select from the contrast what you want to know more about. There is a way to live in this world and be observant of this world and still be connected to source energy. Right. And that is in fact what in religious terms you've called compassion. Right. That is in fact what being an extension of source energy is. It is in fact what we've been calling step five. Step one is ask. Life causes you to do that. Step two is source answers. Step three is you got to get in the receptive mode. Step four is you've mastered the receptive mode, which means you can get there easily and often. And step five is you no longer beat up on yourself when you're back in step one because you understand the value of step one. So what we're really talking about here is a sort of step five approach to life where you understand that there's plenty out there and that it's all much more good than it is bad and that you are in control of your vibration regardless of the evidence that is as a result of past momentum. This is the point that we're wanting to make with you about changing the momentum or the trajectory of anything. Your now is so much more powerful than you have ever given yourself credit. But most of you do not change the momentum in your now because what's been going on before has you sort of on a track that you seem to be willing to accept and that's what we would ask of you to be different as a result of the conversations that we're having together you do not have to stay on the same track you can in fact use your powerful now to make a more defined decision about what you want and you can use your ability to focus in a way to focus more deliberately on what you want for the simple reason of you prefer to feel good rather than bad you prefer to feel ease rather than congestion you prefer to feel clarity rather than confusion you care about the way you feel so you guide your thoughts you don't try to change the world you don't try to convince others you don't try to change conditions you don't try to argue for your conditions or for one condition being right over another you let your entire argument for yourself and for humanity to be about things that feel uplifting to you that's the way you sort all of this out